So I take zero notes in medical school. Yeah, I really take no notes in medical school. In this video, I'm gonna show you exactly how I do that and how after I started taking no notes, I actually started performing better than I ever did before. If you don't know me, my name is Zach and I'm a second year medical student in Philadelphia. I made a video about this before and I took a deep dive into the literature about what study techniques have shown to be more effective than other study techniques. In general, summarizing, highlighting, and rereading are really not that good as study techniques. In comparison, active recall, spaced repetition, and practice testing are effective and evidence-based techniques that work. I've also tried to kind of generalize this guide so it's not just for medical school if you're kind of studying for a college or in any other course, you can use the tips and tricks that I'm gonna outline here and help you perform better in whatever you're studying. So prerequisites to this video, there's a couple things that you need to know about. You need to know about Anki. I have a couple videos on it, but you just need to know in general that it's a flashcard app that'll help you study. And there are two techniques, the Pomodoro technique and the Feynman technique that I use every day when I'm studying. So let's get into it. What is the strategy I use every day? Well, the core strategy is what I said earlier, right? It's active recall, practice testing, and space repetition. These are the three kind of pillars of my studying, I guess you could say my entire strategy revolves around this. I avoid at all costs, highlighting, rereading, or summarizing. In one sentence, it's gonna be plan, preview, view, review, practice test and repeat. So every week I plan out what I'm gonna study based on what I'm gonna be exposed to that next week. So if I see topic A is on Monday, B is on Tuesday and C is on Wednesday, I will review those topics the day before. So for example, if topic B is on Tuesday, then I will review things around topic B on Monday. I like to show up to lecture or Zoom lecture or the recording or whatever prepared and knowledgeable about the subject. And why am I doing this? Well, one, the evidence supports this, right? A good night's sleep will help consolidate and optimize these memories or what you studied. And two, it's just, I find personally, and this is anecdotal of course, but when I show up to lectures with more knowledge of the subject, I learn it better, I can focus better, and I can kind of ask better questions and get more from it. Okay, so we know what we're gonna study, we know in what order we're gonna study, but now we need to figure out how we're actually gonna study. The first thing I wanna do is just really briefly skim over the entire PowerPoint lecture or notes or whatever I'm gonna be learning the next day. And this will not take me more than two minutes. I just wanna get a really general idea of what's going on. Is it a lecture on the heart? Okay, what am I learning about in the heart? I'm learning about valves in the heart. Okay, so I'm gonna be learning about valves in the heart this lecture. Number two is I wanna learn all the terms. If there's a certain term in the lecture that I don't understand, like for example, hypertrophic cardiomyopathy, I wanna look it up so I know what that term Term means and this may take about 10 minutes and when I don't know a term I'll usually just look it up and that's enough but if for some reason that piece of information isn't sticking in my head I'll go into Anki and make a flashcard about it. Anki is overwhelming to a lot of people but really it's just an electronic flashcard app don't be afraid download it watch one video on YouTube about it and then just start making some cards. Okay so I've gotten a general idea of the lecture I've understood all the terms now we have to take a little bit more time and actually try and learn what's going on in this lecture. Now I don't want you just reading through the lecture, I want you to try and find some sort of third party resource. Maybe this is a chapter in a textbook, maybe this is a YouTube video, which pretty much everything you learn anywhere, there's a YouTube video for. Watch this video, read this chapter in the book, and don't take any notes during it. I just want you to try and get a feel for what's going on. And once you're done watching this video, Think in your head, okay, could I explain this topic to a friend? Could I present to them kind of what's going on in this video and give them a nice intro to the subject? And if you wanted to quiz this friend to see if they understood you, how would you quiz them? What question would you ask them? And then what I do is I take those questions and I put them into a flashcard. I make a flashcard out of those things. And that is step four, create relevant flashcards. So what you're gonna do is after you've watched this summary video or read this chapter or done whatever you need to do is I would turn this chapter or whatever into some flashcards. So this is where the magic happens, creating the flashcards. This is where you're gonna convert this information into questions to test yourself until your final exam. Anki will then space out when it's gonna ask you these questions based on when it thinks you need to be tested again so you remember this information in the long term. So a few points on creating flashcards. The first thing is, don't memorize, understand. When I first started creating Anki flashcards, I would kind of fall into this trap of just memorizing. For example, if we were learning about aortic regurgitation, I would understand, okay, aortic regurgitation might present with these symptoms, but I didn't understand what aortic regurgitation is. I didn't even understand how the heart pumped. I didn't even understand the way blood flowed through the heart and the lungs and the body which is some pretty basic information, right? You should know that before you start learning about aortic regurgitation or different heart sounds or kind of weird 
syndromes that the heart might get. Now these little facts that you might be testing yourself on Anki are important, but the general understanding is more important. Number two is limit the number of cards you make. If you make a flashcard for every single piece of information you go through in lecture, you will make way too many flashcards and you'll get overwhelmed. Also, these cards should be short flashcards. I'm not gonna really go into specifics of the Anki and making flashcards. I'll link a video down below on how to actually make better flashcards, but you want them to be short and to the point. Finally, when you're making these Anki cards, make sure these cards aren't already in a pre-made deck or something you could find. For example, in medical school, there's a ton of pre-made decks, so I really barely make any cards. I maybe make two flashcards a day based off questions I've gotten wrong during practice testing. But if you don't have access to these pre-made decks, which a lot of kind of different courses don't, then you will probably need to make your own cards. So that's it. That's previewing the information. Again, what are we gonna do? We're gonna get a general idea by skimming for no more than 10 minutes. Then we're gonna learn all the bolded terms in the lecture. This should take less than 10 minutes. Then we're gonna learn this material from a third party resource or the textbook. We're not reading through the slides. We're finding some kind of summary video and learning it from there. And finally, number four, we're gonna create flashcards as if we were explaining this to a friend and then testing them on how we explain them. That's the day before lecture. Now we're on to view. On the day of lecture or class or whatever you're doing, I show up, I sit there and I just watch. I pay attention, I listen, and I try to become involved and interested in what's going on. Usually someone, if not yourself, is paying a good amount of money for you to be in that seat or watching that video right now. As we are going through the slides and as the teacher is kind of teaching us this new information, I'll kind of think to myself two or three times during the lecture, Okay, what's a question I could ask myself? What's a question that he or she might ask on the test based on what they're presenting right now? Could I explain what is being taught right now to a friend? Then maybe during lecture or shortly after, I'll actually go into Anki right away and make a flashcard based off that question that's in my head. So I will study those flashcards I made. I will go through Anki and make sure I understand everything that's there. Maybe tweaking them a little bit, removing some words, adding some words, adding some notes, whatever makes these kind of cards stick. Oh, and that lecture, that PowerPoint slide, I'll probably never look at it again. If ever I come back to that lecture, it will only be because maybe there was a practice question or an Anki question that I had that didn't really make sense to me and I didn't understand it, so I needed to go back to the source material. But rarely, if ever, I will look at a lecture again. I will never rewatch a lecture again. I will never reread the notes. I just won't do it. It's shown to be not effective and it doesn't work for me. So now we have the lecture and Anki working like a well-oiled machine. How do we kick this up a notch? How do we take it to the next level and really start to improve our performance on tests? Again, I referenced this in a video before when I kind of dove into the evidence about why certain study techniques are good and why certain study techniques are bad. But the, pe the main paper that I referenced looked at 10 different study techniques and kind of rated them as low utility, moderate utility, or high utility. And guess what showed up as low utility? Summarizing, rereading, and highlighting. And guess what showed up as high utility? In fact, the only two things out of the 10 that showed up as high utility, that was practice testing and distributed practice or space repetition. If I do practice questions, I do them often. And when I get them wrong, I make a flashcard based on the information that I got wrong. Find questions online. Does your teacher provide questions? Are there questions in the back of that textbook that you never opened? There's somewhere or someplace you can find practice questions. Do those questions and do as many as you can because the more you do, the better you'll do it. Once I've gotten kind of a handle on the lecture material, I will start doing practice questions as soon and as frequently as possible. Finally, you need to repeat this. Repeat this process across all of your classes and you will improve. I know I did. This really isn't easy. Um, I know personally, I kind of feel my brain working harder as I do these flashcards and as I do these practice questions compared to when I used to just like reread a lecture or rewatch a lecture, or just sit there and chill. My brain actually feels like it's working harder. So use the Pomodoro method and kind of get to work. And I found one thing that's dramatically reduced my stress and improved kind of my effectiveness every day when I'm studying. And that very simply is just a post-it note. It's just a post-it note. And what I do the night before is I just write down every single thing I need to do the next day. That way when I wake up, I don't need to think about, okay, how am I gonna study today? I just literally look at the first thing on the list and start working. For example, I have a, this post-it is for tomorrow, but I have Anki reviews, go for a run, attend Zoom class, finish my Anki reviews, look at demyelinating disorders and do those new Anki cards and then do 30 practice questions. And this is great because I'll just wake up and start on this. So let's put this all together. How are you gonna use this daily and how are you gonna start using this now to kind of do better in school? Plan, plan the week ahead. What lectures are you gonna have? How are you gonna prepare for those lectures the day before? 
Then, every weeknight before the next day, write out a detailed list of exactly what you're gonna get accomplished the next day. The next step is preview. Preview the lecture material for the next day. Next, view the lecture material. The next day, go to lecture, watch lecture, whatever, sit there, pay attention, listen. You won't be coming back to this lecture or slideshow ever again. Then after lecture, review that information, create some flashcards and review the flashcards you made the previous day. Then test yourself with practice questions. What might an average day look like? Well, you wake up and you do all your Anki reviews. You do all the flashcards that you're learning in this current semester or current block or whatever. Then you would go to lecture or watch lecture. Then you would review that lecture material, maybe make a few more Anki cards and do some practice questions if you feel comfortable with that lecture material. Every practice question you get wrong, make an Anki card that kind of consolidates that information. Then it might be a good idea to take a break if you're using the Pomodoro method, you will be taking regularly spaced breaks anyway, but this might be a good time for a longer break. Then you'll preview tomorrow's lecture material. So again, this is the same day and you're gonna preview whatever you're gonna be learning tomorrow in tomorrow's lecture or class or Zoom or whatever. And then go to bed and that's it. This is how I study by taking zero notes in medical school. I haven't taken notes in over a year now and I've never scored better on exams. And again, I've said this before, this is just the way I study. This might not work for you, you need to kind of figure out and play around with different strategies until you find the strategy that works for you and you can see with the results that you've improved. So for example, if you do this strategy and you try it for maybe two or three months and your scores actually go down, stop it. Don't use this strategy. Use the strategy that you've been using before to, work, to, to kind of score better. But I think if you adopt this strategy and you adopt it consistently and you stick to what I said, it's gonna be pretty hard for you to not do better on exams and tests. If you want to change your grades, you need to change your study strategy. But that's it, thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next one.